All right, and welcome back to our second part on capital budgeting, which is valuing a business. Okay, so brought to you by MBA Bullshit. And before this video, you should first understand the concepts of present value, the net present value, basic capital budgeting, and the weighted average cost of capital, or the WAC. Now, if you don't understand these concepts yet, then I recommend that you first watch my other free videos on these topics above. All right, let's get down to it. Now, when we say valuing a business, we're actually trying to answer the question, how much is a business worth? So if you remember, here is a store, here is a business, an existing business. How much is this bi example? Maybe, okay, maybe you, you want to buy this store from this owner, dude, guy over here. You want to buy it from him. But before you buy it from him, you have to find out how much is the business worth. Okay? And here is where financial managers, financial managers and accountants have different philosophies. Okay? Because most accountants, the way they would value a business is they look at the price of the assets, or the shelves, the building, the uniform, and then they look at the price of the liabilities or the debt. Maybe they owe money to the bank. And then they use they subtract the debt from the assets and they come out with something called owner's equity. And that's how accountants value the business. The amount of owner's equity is how much the business is worth. Okay? However, okay, if you don't understand that by the way, don't worry. I'll, you'll see it in a while. However, financial managers, we don't care about the asset value and the owner's equity. We don't care if this shelf costs a million dollars or whatever. We we don't care if, if this if the business building is worth a lot. Usually, okay? Usually. What we do care about is the net present value or the present value of the free cash flows. Okay? So this just this is another way of saying how much the the uh, the store actually earns so if the store has for example ten thousand dollars worth of shelves and equipment but it earns only five dollars a year for example then the store is not worth much because even if the assets are worth a lot the fact that it earns such a small amount means that it is a bad business and it is worth little okay so most financial managers put a heavier importance on the earnings of the business rather than or instead of the assets of the business okay and these earnings one way of representing these earnings is by looking at the free cash flow okay so the way we value a business is we look at the present value of the free cash flow plus the present value of its horizon value okay now don't worry if you don't understand these terms yet you will see in a while and one more thing how to compute the free cash flow I will discuss that in another video so for this video I will just give you the amounts or the figures of this businesses free cash flow so that you can understand the concept quickly alright let's move on 
So for example, okay, for example, this business, this store, which we saw over here, has free cash flow earnings of $10,000 in year one, $12,000 in year two, 11,000 in year three, and $13,000 in year four, okay? And this is given, okay? In more advanced problems, you would have to compute this yourself. But I will do that or discuss that in another video. So let's just assume and pretend that these are the free cash flows of the business, of the store. And then I give you the following given information. Okay, the first thing is horizon year is year three. Okay, horizon year is year three, which means this. Okay, now it is very important to remember. Now you might be wondering what the heck is a horizon year? Well, horizon just means that you look into the future, right? However, most people make the mistake of thinking that the horizon year is the last year of information that you are given in the problem. Okay? Do not do that. Year 4 is not the horizon year. Okay? Usually, your professor will say the horizon year is one year before the last year or year three alright so remember to always read the problem carefully and look what your professor says is the horizon year and in our case it is year three alright now if you're wondering why we need to know this horizon year uh, you will see in a short time later, a short while. I'll show you why it is important. And we know that the weighted average cost of capital is 10%. Okay, that is given, is 10%. Now, again, in more advanced problems, you will have to compute the weighted average cost of capital, the WAC, by yourself and if you don't know how to compute this you can watch my other video about WAC alright and the other piece of information which is given is that the estimated free cash flow long-term average growth after the horizon year so this is the horizon year and after the horizon year we have an estimated long-term average growth of 5% per year. So this year 4, year 5, year 6, year 7, the free cash flow will grow at around 5% per year. Okay, does not mean that it will grow exactly 5% per year on each year, like this one. It just means that on the average it will grow 5% per year, 5, 5, 5, 5% 5 on the average. Okay? So these, or this information here is given. Now, how do we compute the, uh, or how do we value the business? Well, we first have to look at two formulas. Remember, I said we have to look at the present value of the free cash flows alright so to do that we use this formula here okay don't panic don't panic I know it looks scary and complicated but I will show you how easy it is 